enjoy Tornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik. Thanks for tuning in. Join today across the table, fellow marketeers, familiar voices, familiar faces, although rest in peace, Preston's long, glorious beard. Yeah, and folks probably haven't seen it in a while, though, so no. they don't even know. Okay, for reference, Preston had a giant Leonidas beard, just just robust and great. But I'd also like to introduce Judd's mustache. Oh. So, uh, guys, thanks for coming on the show today. <laughs> I never I, thought we'd be talking about yeah. this, but that, yeah, what, a, what an intro, yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, let's, before we devolve too, too far, uh, let's uh, do some housekeeping stuff first. First and foremost, um, podcast numbers, you know, we've into this now well past a year, the interaction that we're getting with the actual listeners of the podcast is, is increased significantly, whether that's comments on YouTube or emailing in at podcast at hornady.com or trade shows, people seeing us. I was just got back from a trip. I got stopped in the airport um, by uh, somebody that listened, TJ uh, from Arkansas, uh, ran into me Arkansas. in the airport. Arkansas. Yep. Ran into me in the airport and just wanted to say that he appreciates the quality of the podcast had that, you know, the 4k cameras and the, the audio and, and that we're doing a good job with it. So, uh, we do appreciate that. It goes a long way because this is, you know, it seems like we're just guys sitting around a table talking because we are, but it's actually a lot more laborious than you would, uh, you would think. And so getting that little feedback that people are really enjoying it and it's resonating with them just helps fuel our fire to keep doing this. Yeah. Well, yeah, we actually just got an email to podcast at horny.com a gentleman uh said hey love the show you know he's wrote in before but he's like hey i got this great idea for a podcast or he didn't necessarily say that but i said yeah that would be a great idea so if you got an idea of something you want to hear about drop us a comment uh drop us an email maybe we'll uh hit it up yeah it might turn into a podcast yeah so well well the neat thing just for hornady to have this resource a direct line to communicate with with shooters out there since my time at Hornady, you know, the podcast world has exploded. Yeah. Hornady's never had a, an outlet like this mm-hmm. to have direct communication. You know, you can hear feedback easily from different shooters, hunters out there. You know, we've done different Q&A podcasts with those questions. We're probably about due for another one. Yeah. You know, it's neat. It's just cool to do deep dives. Yeah. Yeah. The long form. And you can really get into some, some weeds and it's not a super produced video like when we do you know we have Jaden sit around and talk about something for 10 or 15 minutes those are cool but to be able to like you said take a deep dive long form listen to something on the way home in the car you know yeah really handy really so neat. appreciate all the interaction uh from the you listeners out there so without further ado the topic at hand you know it's been a few weeks now but months probably we did a podcast on march 8th uh for the 308 winchester introduced to us in the year of our Lord, 1952. And it's been a great cartridge for a lot of things because of its versatility. And it has birthed a few children. And so, uh, again, a few weeks ago, we did a, uh, a podcast on probably its most popular child, which was the 243 Winchester. And now, going one child down, I guess it's just so it. weird to talk, just think of them as children. I well, know, yeah, me, I guess weird. this is the middle child, though, but we got... <laughs> Another popular cartridge that that probably rivals the 243 and 308 Winchester in popularity. Certainly in areas uh, throughout the country, it's very popular mm-hmm. uh, regionally and within you know some new shooters or female shooters. It's an awesome option, but it hits above its weight class as far as performance goes. We're talking about none other than the seven millimeter Ot eight. Oh eight. Oh eight. Ot eight. Ot eight. I'm an Ot guy. I think I'm it's an Ot eight. Oh wait, seniors. Oh wait, oh wait, <laughs> seven odd eight. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah. I don't, I, that's true, you say I the odd six. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's a three oh eight. I don't know. Well, I don't anyway, know. I'm gonna refer. I'm to I'm from it. a different place. Than Love you, a, so. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. refer to it as the seven oh eight. The seven oh eight. Leave it there. So the seven oh eight released to us in 1980. 1980. It took that long. So the three for a Winchester. commercial ammunition company to introduce it or rifle company actually yeah. you know because remington did it it wasn't the winchester it was, it remington. was a 708 remington. remington yeah so 1980 308 came out in 1952 of course 
I'm sure there's wildcats. Wildcats. So if it came out almost immediately. on January 1st of 52, January 2nd, people were <laughs> necking that. <laughs> they were already thinking about it. Just like we think about stuff here yeah. all the time, they were probably doing it back yeah. then too. So for nearly 30 years, it operated in the wildcat world. Yeah. And obviously got, wild. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> got popular enough that Remington decided, hey, you know, we, we, we got a home for this thing. And they introduced it originally in the 788. And I think the Remington 700 bolt action platform. Yep, bolt and, action. But it's been chambered in all sorts of different things, right? So it's it's been in semi autos and, and lever guns as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, BLRs. Oh yeah. Um, it would absolutely fit in an AR10, but I'm sure that there's been other semi automatics which have waned over the years in popularity. Yep. You know, as far as just production releases of Woodstock rifles that are semi automatic. You know, like. I'm I'm pretty partial to that Winchester Model 100 308. They never did it in 708 because obviously yeah. it's a Winchester gun. But yeah, kind of kind of neat to think about. Yeah. So the Wildcatters playing around with it right out of the gate, and then you got Remington in 1980. They introduced it. it. What are we doing here? Are we just necking that 308 Winchester parent down? Well, that's what everybody did. Mm-hmm. But Sammy the Prince will actually show you that the case is twenty thousands longer. For whatever reason. I'm sure if you neck it down a 308, you might get some stretch, obviously. Yeah. But I don't know if it's 20,000s worth. Is it that in the neck or is just it the, the shoulder? Okay. No, shoulder location is in the exact same spot. So it's just a little bit longer You neck. could take a 7 millimeter neck size die, put a 308 into it. Yeah, it would yeah. work. Yeah, and, and, and squeeze it down. Yeah, yeah. You have to trim it uniform. So they just basically neck down that 308 Winchester, and they spec a 9.5 inch twist in Sammy. So the Sammy specs, if you look at them right now, the original print from 1980 calls for a one to nine and a half inches of twist. It's pretty great that's for most was, bullets. That's pretty quick. Yeah, it's it, pretty it, common in seven millimeter to see a nine, nine and a quarter, or a nine and a half. Um, you know, years ago, I guess in the seven weather being a few others, you might have saw a 10 twist, but right. this was many years ago. But in 1980, nine and a half inches of twist. And today, it's pretty common to find a nine twist rifle on the shelf, and that covers quite a few high BC bullets of the modern uh, era. You know, mm-hmm. so overall twist rate at consideration is was the norm, but I think pretty good. You know, yeah. for today's stuff, yeah, I think so. And it doesn't have an, as much powder capacity that you would want if you were going to shoot those big heavies that do require the faster twist anyway. Yeah, because you do have to take head height into consideration yeah, as well. Yeah, it's a 2.810 or 2.820 overall length maximum. Actually, Sammy says 2.8 even. Really? Yeah, but obviously magazine boxes allow for a mm-hmm. little extra. Right. But yeah, um, I'm sure if you took a, a 162 grain ELDX, for an example, and seeded it to 1.62, it might work. Or 2.8. Or 2.8, sorry. Yeah. But you'd be eating a lot of capacity yeah. from that powder, which may not be the end of the world but as we've learned we like to get the bullet out of the case and and let it do its natural thing i suppose is what you'd say so coming right out of the gate in in 1952 with the 308 winchester you had the 243 or the you know the the six millimeter 08 and then the seven millimeter 08 the six millimeter version what came to be this the 243 probably a little more geared towards the ultimate in versatility prey dogs coyotes deer antelope that kind of thing the 708 just that larger caliber and then a little bit heavier bullet probably lends itself at, it's super versatile but maybe more towards that medium yeah, size to, game to me i think it just jumps up a class still versatile as the 243 as versatile i would say but it jumps up a class mm-hmm. i would say because you still we still have a v max for it right so right. you could go shoot a, pra- a, ki- a prairie dog coyote probably a little overkill for it in my yeah. opinion the heavy 120 grains right, right. so big one um I think what you what you you kind of stop. We s- decided medium game with the two forty three. Yeah, like a deer. Mule However, deer. seven millimeter oh eight, I would say perfectly capable of taking an elk. I think people take elk. Well, I know people take elk with it every year with the appropriate bullet. Yep. Which and, would be what? What do you think? Well, you know, if if it, if it were me, I'd probably shoot a one sixty two ELDX and just limit my range because my velocity might be a little slower. Or controversial. Hear me here, out. He's going to say, hear me up. 139 grain CX. That's you know, not controversial. Yeah. I think for a lot of folks that don't quite understand bullet performance at deeper levels, they see 139 grains and go, well, that's, that's, that's not heavy. Enough. That's not heavy enough. Well, 
it is when you retain 98% of your weight, you know, it starts life at 139 and it ends life at a and 136. Regularly, pe- yeah. regularly penetrates into the second gel box. That yeah. It'll the go first one, 20, know? 30 inches. So yeah, that's, that's what I would choose, but a ton of versatility in I'd the bullets. I'd throw in there the 150 grain ELDX. Yeah. Very you capable know? bullet. So I guess we should probably talk about factory ammo options. Yeah. Because before that, we, oh, before we get there, I wanted to mention... We talked about its versatility. You got the varmint hunting. You've got the medium size and kind of that big game hunting. Mm -hmm. Uh, One area that's not really popular now, but in the 80s was wildly popular, and that's silhouette shooting. Oh, sure. A lot of competitions going on silhouette shooting. My father-in-law did that for a while. Really? I think there's still a place in central Nebraska you can do it, maybe in Holdridge. I don't know. Wow. Excellent. But a a, a sport that has waned in popularity, but uh, that cartridge did really well mild recoil you had enough bullet options accurate and then it knocked those big rams down at 500 and whatever your distances were yeah i think guys like to use it in the pistol class too yes yep you know and the that's why we actually have some some pistol data for it yep um it's literally because of metallic silhouette shooting yeah very popular so yeah and i guess if you're not familiar with it there's sizes of animals chickens turkeys pigs rams. rams i might be missing one here but they're spaced out at i believe 100 200 300 400 and 500 yards right and you have five of them stacked up and you get x amount of shots but your goal is just to hit that ram knock it over or hit that animal knock it over and that's that's the whole game and with this with this cartridge because cool. you're shooting a little heavier bullet a little more energy and as those bullets are expanding you might you know if you went with something kind of sub caliber you might be able to hit it but not knock it over mm-hmm. so that is neat yeah. and that's the cool thing in that game sidebar if you ricochet a bullet into it and it falls over it (laughs) It works (laughs) that is kind of cool skipping bullets in there did you know that hornady has a full line of reloading tools and equipment whether you're brand new to the reloading game or a seasoned veteran we have tools that will work awesome with your setup check out all of hornady's reloading tools at hornady.com well, let's talk, like you said, about our factory ammo offerings because it's so popular yeah. and it's one of our most... Well, I, I would almost argue it's not that popular, I guess. Uh, we still support the crap out of it. Yeah. And, think, and we sell a lot of it. I would think if you could just compare 243 skews okay. across the board to 7 millimeter 8 screws or definitely 308 to 7 millimeter 08, odd 8, 08. <laughs> The, the factory skew options across the industry yeah, are less. They are, yes. However, it's a it's a good cartridge. It's a great cartridge, and I think the Southeast, for whatever reason, it it is way more popular in that neck of the woods than almost anywhere, but we do got plenty of offerings for you. What do we got for factory ammunition in the 7mm OOT 8? I don't know. Probably the coolest one is custom light. You know, that really takes the recoil down. Now, we say it's lighter recoiling than a 308. No doubt, right? Right. Same amount of powder, lighter weight bullet for the most part. Custom light oftentimes cuts it by 36%, yeah, probably in there, 30 to 40. T- yeah, 20 to 40% from the, the original cartridge. So our custom light in 708 is going to be, yeah, 36 or whatever it is, percent less recoil than a traditional 708 offering. Yeah, loaded with 139 grain bullet. Ours 20, got a 120 grain bullet. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and it's it's a great option for if you're not shooting that far, or if you have a young child, or maybe somebody that's just recoil sensitive in general. Mm-hmm. It's a great option. It is a little bit reduced muzzle velocity, twenty six seventy five feet per second at the muzzle. Yep. And if you're shooting traditional distances and in, that's a, that's a hoot. No recoil, soft on the shoulder. You're still going to hit what you're aiming at, and it's got more than enough authority to kill the deer and the antelope and anything on down. Yep. If you're into speed, though. We got a couple of super performance options. Yes, which I am. I, you know, one of those benefits of shooting the short barrels and the short action cartridges uh, is you can get super performance and get that velocity back. Mm-hmm. You don't need the bigger powder capacity. You don't need the longer barrel. You just need super performance. Yep. What are our super performance offerings? You got the traditional Hornady super performance op- offerings 139 grain CX now and 139 grain SST. SST is going to go just a little bit faster than the CX. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote it down here. 2910 Whoa. on the CX. 
So that's pretty good. But the Super Form is twenty nine fifty. Yeah, that's cruising. That's cruising. I mean, if you're shooting stuff, yeah, in that middle distance, you know, if you're you're trying to be accurate out to about five hundred yards or so, the SST bullet's going to work well for you. It's going to expand really well down to about seventeen fifty feet per second. I mean, that's blazing and, fast. And, and like you mentioned, if if you're not a hand loader and, and factory ammo is your game for elk. Maybe consider that 139CX Superformance. It's got all the speed. Uh, that bullet thrives on speed, and it's going to hit in a higher weight class. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it punches above its weight class yeah. for sure. And then I think probably the most common offering that you're going to see everywhere, the American Whitetail 139 grain interlock. Just a classic. Doesn't well, get any more classic easy, than that. It's the easy, peasy decision. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Put it right on the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, for for whitetail deer hunting and antelope and mule deer and that kind of that game animal size, you can't get better than that. I mean, 139 grain bullet, not going slow by any means, doing nearly 2850. Yeah, and for and, for moderate distances. Yeah, doesn't get it's better a home, than that. A home run. And I think the 708 really thrives on bullet weights between 120 and 140. Um, you know, I think it, it, it's got plenty of powder capacity to really get some good speed with that, but we got one more option and to be honest with you, it's probably my favorite factory ammo option out there. Yep. 150 grain ELDX in the precision hunter line. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, as far as Sammy goes, that's the heaviest ELDX we could put in factory ammo. Yep. Uh, so you got a high BC, uh, and, and temperature stable powders. I mean, it's a, it's a home run. Yeah. So yeah, if you're shooting stuff. From near to far, everywhere in between with a 708, um, that's that's the best option in my opinion. You know, yeah. like you said, maybe consider that for elk at a at a moderate range. Um, it's just good ammo, just not just 708 specifically, but Precision Hunter as a whole. Yeah, I believe BC on that point five seven four, so up there in the high fives and going twenty seven seventy out of a hundred out of a twenty four inch barrel. Wow, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Now that's factory options. Well. This thing lived as a wildcat for nearly three decades. Let's talk hand loading a little bit because not just Hornady, but everybody that makes a bullet makes seven millimeter bullets and they make a lot of them. Yeah. There's things on the market from a hundred grains to 200 grains if you want. Uh, and a lot of options there. You can really tailor something. Yeah. Cool thing to me is that Varget works well in this cartridge. Yeah. You know? And I've, I've said it, you've said it, we've all said it. If if Varget works in a cartridge, just start with that. And try that. <laughs> yeah, it's just accurate, you know, yep. accurate powder. Yep. I um, think uh, for me playing around with the seven oh eight a little bit when I worked in ballistics, um, yeah, Varget a home run. When you start getting into those heavier bullets like that one fifty ELDX or a one sixty two ELDX, or for you long range shooters out there like a one sixty two ELD match, a powder that really performed well from an accuracy and velocity standpoint was Alliant Reloader 17. I was, uh, like I said, played around with this cartridge quite a bit uh, in my time in ballistics doing mm -hmm. pressure and velocity work and stuff. And Reloader 17 was a, a nice powder, great accuracy always. And then in this cartridge with those heavier bullets, plenty of speed. You could run those 162s north of 2,700 feet per second by a little bit. You can get the 150s doing 2,800. Um, that's, that's moving right along. Oh, and if Freeloader, bullet. if Freeloader 17 works well, then H4350 is going to work well as well for the most part. So mm -hmm. you get a little bit more temperature-stable powder as well there. One interesting thing, as I was looking around on Hodgson's website, uh, when Stayball uh, 6.5 came out, mm -hmm. the velocities that you can attain with this cartridge in particular and some heavier weight bullets are pretty remarkable. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. I, I was going to load some up for a buddy. Uh but he's never really going to need them, <laughs> so we just got to stick with factory ammo. But I, I'd like to try it sometime. Has there ever been a, a hard match push for the 7-odd-8? I, mean, I is think... There, are there guys messing with the twist rate or, or doing different things on the match side of things? I know we talk silhouette, but... Yeah, I think there's probably a handful now that are using it for, like, maybe NRL Hunter, okay. for example. But I think... Before the PRS and that style of shooting was popular, so you're going maybe 2011 and earlier, I think there was more, uh, there was more, mm, there was more use of it. Uh, there was just people that, okay, this makes sense. We have good bullet options. You're going to build a rifle, cut the recoil down a little bit, 
you're going to pick up some efficiency going to a 7 millimeter bolt instead of the 308. I think there was quite a few people using it, um, although I don't know the amount of use in, like, say, sanctioned matches, yeah. F-Class, that kind of thing. Yeah. But for the recreational target shooter, I think there's plenty of use. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, I think one of the things with match bullets, they tend to be heavier for caliber, and like our 162 is a great example. Awesome bullet, and it fits well with the 7 millimeter 08, but anything heavier than that, you're probably stifling it just a little too much, so some of those bigger match bullets... Yeah, and I think people lighter. would probably argue with you on it fits really well in a 7 millimeter 08. I think it fits okay, it personally, does. you yeah. know. I think 154 and yeah, the head height... You know, with the longer high BC bullets, that's probably where it should live. Yep. Personally, but, you know, if you have a long action, let's say you build a gun, build it on a long action, you can set that bullet up as long as you want and have, you know, appropriate amount of free bore to get that bullet out of there. It'd be a home run. Yep. Now, Ackley did improve it as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's a an interesting option as well for you hand loaders. More of a cool option. I don't think yeah. it really picked up normally those improved chambers, you know, the, the 280 benefited quite a bit. And then there's yep. several others that don't really benefit that much at all. Maybe more for the brass and for the rifle than the actual exterior ballistics of it. Right. Like the 243 was a good example. Didn't really gain anything from that uh, new and improved shoulder angle and case taper, but it looks cool. Makes the brass last a little bit longer. Yeah. And if you, and I guess if you were going to build a gun or have a gun built, whatever, and you put, you know, faster twists in it, not ne- not necessarily necessary. That's it's not oxymoron. particularly necessary. <laughs> not particularly necessary. But let's say you go with AI bottom metal, you know, mm-hmm. and you go with a mag without a binder plate. You can get that uh, seating depth out to 2.950 rather than 2.8. Mm-hmm. And that's going to help you out a little bit. Um, but you're not, it's just, a, it's a long case for the, for the type of bullets yeah. that we're trying, that I would want to shoot out yeah. of it personally. I think- yeah, like Judd's question, you know, was there a big push for it for matches? A little bit, but not, not nothing crazy. I think uh, it has solidified itself as a staple hunting cartridge, at least mm-hmm. in our country and around the world. I mean, it, it's got international use. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's some uh, countries out there that have a, a minimum, you know, caliber or energy requirement, whatever it may be for moose. Mm-hmm. And so in Europe, it's it's approved for those. Uh, countries and, and hunting moose. Yeah, the Scandinavians, you know, the Sweden, Finland, Norway, up in that neck of the woods. Yeah, great cartridge for that. And let's not forget that when it was introduced in 1980, Jeff Cooper, Colonel Cooper, on the big uh, scout rifle push. Mm-hmm. And this is how Jeff Cooper feel about the 708. Stamp of approval. It got right? the so it, Colonel the JC stamp of approval. Could be used in the scout rifle. He said it's either a 708 or a 308. That's what a scout rifle should be. Okay. And scout rifle, for the listeners not super familiar, is just kind of an idea of what a rifle should be. It was supposed to be functional, practical, and have plenty of killing power. Um, generally, he liked to keep those rifles 40 inches or shorter, or 39 inches or shorter. So a nice, compact rifle with uh, enough power to kill an animal of around a thousand pounds or less is what he specified Um, and he liked to have that scope forward uh, so that you could keep your peripheral vision so there was special scout scopes that had that super long eye box if you've ever looked at a optics manufacturer's website sometimes you'll see a scout scope burris optics for example vortex and loophole they have extremely long eye relief Hmm. because those scopes are far out in front yep but again short packable capable functional uh that's that was the scout rifle idea and the 708 kind of fits uh right in there it would work yep and like you mentioned earlier it's been in every possible conceivable configuration ar10 blr bolt action lever action it's been it's been everywhere yep which is pretty cool we're, we're the majority of the way through this conversation and i've been sitting here with you guys almost more as a listener this go around and i've had this thought for a handful of years now i want to for the nostalgia side of things i want to build a, a white tail you know nebraska hunting rifle a wood stocked you know nice scope and i haven't really thought about the 708 on that and now you really got me considering that that'd be kind of neat to, to yeah. go with i've got the 243 that we've talked about in the last episode beautiful savage but probably I, the I'm, ultimate classic well yeah, yeah. 
But I, I want to add something else, and I've thought about this for a long time and just haven't pulled the trigger. Yeah. Maybe no offense to Savage, but something maybe a little more regal looking, like a little bit more yeah. classically styled sock or stock or high, high polished walnut or yeah, that something like neat. that. Make it cool with the with the ebony foreign cap, you know. And but yeah. yeah, I mean, I've had thoughts too. Like, you know, let's just go easy six five Creedmoor and have it. But you know, it would be neat to do something a little more classic. Or you could just wildcat hand load oh, go seven millimeter creep more yeah there yeah you, go. you could but i i you know what that makes a lot of that's a cool that's a cool build idea yeah, yeah you can always go grab american whitetail yep that's exactly that's my bull especially for the whitetail you know that interlock has i've shot that from before i worked from Hornady. so mm-hmm. it's uh yeah it's been good but i think i need to consider that now that would be kind of cool yeah throw Rolling. it in there out here you may only get one chance. So never compromise at any distance. Match accurate ELDX bullets, highest BCs, flat trajectories, and unparalleled terminal performance at all practical ranges. Precision Hunter Ammunition from Hornady. For everybody out there listening that is a hunter or getting into hunting, just like you're thinking about building kind of like a classic hunting rifle. They make new rifles today. You can go yeah. to the store. Be considerate. You know, this is something to, to really put in the hopper. Obviously, it's got plenty of power for just about everything that you're going to hunt, medium-sized game and down. You could stretch it out to elk if you need to. It's not going to beat you up. It's, I mean, it really checks a lot of boxes. So in that vein, while we're talking about it, let's do some comparisons. Where does this 7mm 08 Remington odd eight remington fall in the deck of cards here it's got a lot of competition up and down you know you've got the 243 all the way up to the 308 winchester you got some long action cartridges in there that are popular 25 out 6 270 and the old 65 creedmoor where does the 708 fall from a just sheer number standpoint yeah this is just on paper yep. i would say there's no considerations for chamber design or cartridge design or anything like that this is just a bc and a velocity yep i did plug in a 10 mile an hour wind okay. not sure why i didn't put that on the chart but yeah if, if we look and, and i just put this together i just c- wanted to compare uh, some short action cartridges that had precision hunter in them yep so right? our factory precision hunter offerings and if you look across the board so we're talking 708 308 243 6 creedmoor 65 creed Creedmoor and 6.5 PRC. And the 270, which is well, really a really good comparison action. for the 6.5 PRC. But it is yeah. a long action, right? So I was going to omit that one. But if, if you look at 500-yard trajectory, the span between all of them is a mere 13 inches. Yeah. Not so up or a down, lot. not a lot. And if you threw out the 308 Winchester, that thing goes, is 10 inches of, a lot of uh, elevation difference. Yeah, if you just want to look at 708 versus 308, it's pretty considerable. Yeah. The amount of difference that we have but um so at 500 yards you're looking at um 52 inches for the 708 9.9 minutes or 57 inches for the 308 11 minutes mm-hmm. energy's about the same high 1300s uh 1465 for the 308 when we get to a thousand that more efficient bullet on the seven millimeter uh starts to to span away now obviously, it's literally a yardstick flatter yeah. shooting <laughs> now a thousand yards obviously not everybody's going to shoot anything at a thousand yards maybe in their whole life maybe not game you know certainly not game but so steel even it doesn't really matter that yeah. much i would say but yeah a yardstick of difference in trajectory um energy through eight still got it but just by 20 foot pounds of energy mm-hmm. still i wouldn't say enough energy there to humanely kill an animal i would say it, it definitely would would do it but you know in certain states like nebraska for an instance you have to have a certain amount of energy yeah um, so um yeah against the 243 243 we talked about that big time fast and flat fast and flat baby so 500 yards there's nine inches of difference uh the 243 beats yeah flatter the seven millimeter 08 however energy is yeah. 400 foot pounds different yeah, it suffers uh, a little bit there. Yeah, because it's a 90-grain ELDX compared to 150 grains, so 60 grains of bullet there. Yeah, uh, And then uh, it's actually fairly close back at 1,000 yards. The 708 loses by 
18 inches. Yeah, something like that's that. not pretty, that good. Pretty marginal. Pretty marginal, but the 243 does not have hardly any, any, any energy left. No. Nope. 325 foot pounds. Um, if we want to compare it against the Creed Moors. Yeah. Well, specifically, let's say the 6'5", 500 yard trajectory is negligible. Negligible to most folks, right? There's two inches of difference at 500 yards where the 7 millimeter 8 beats it. Yeah, because it's going faster than the Creedmoor. It's going faster. Yep. Uh, BC of the ELDX and the Creedmoor is higher. Mm-hmm. Um, at a thousand yards, again, three inches. Darn, darn near even. Energy, three foot pounds of winter to the six five Creedmoor. So pretty darn close. Yeah. I think what you probably gain from the six five Creedmoor, like we talked about, this is just paper, but the the six five Creedmoor has got that tighter chamber. It's a lot more easier to go get a factory box of ammo and a factory gun and have it shoot really well. Mm-hmm. And then lighter recoil as well. Yeah. Yeah. But really, I mean, kind of tit for tat there, 7 yep. to 6.5 Creedmoor. So if you are if you hate to love the 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, 7 8, strongly consider that one. Uh, and then the 6.5 PRC ki- kind of belongs in the, in the equation because it is a short action. It is a fatter case than the rest of all of the ones yep. we've talked about. It's a magnet. Not really a fair comparison. Um, but at 500 yards, 243 and 6.5 PRC are darn near equal right uh seven millimeter 08 uh prc's got it by nine inches at 500 yards uh energy a lot more because it's a similar bullet weight but it's yep. starting out way faster 2960 out of a 65 prc versus 2770 out of the 08 and then uh at a thousand yards prc's hammering nearly everything. two yard sticks <laughs> yeah. flatter uh-huh. so definitely flatter and it carries the most energy out there yeah and and a thousand yards is mainly just to amplify the differences that so we can explain them to you. Not that we're recommended shooting an animal that far, but just for target shooting purposes, you know, flatter helps, and you're gonna have less wind drift on the yep, for sure on the flatter shooters. Awesome. So from a comparison standpoint, it really stacks right up in there. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to really call out a a a decisive winner here you know maybe the 243 gets edges edged out maybe the six creedmoor gets edged out if you're looking for energy numbers right but as far as through eight winchester um you know the the uh six five creedmoor and the 708 708 is i mean it's kind of right up there i'd say it beats the 308 winchester oh handily yeah i'd say so yeah. that's uh that's pretty remarkable i'd say if you're a short action folk person you know mm-hmm. and and you're a seven millimeter guy. This is a great option. It is a great little option. And you did mention like, you know, if you love to hate the six five creed more, fine. Whatever. However, I think there's gonna be a lot more six five creed more ammunition out there. There is, yeah. Though that's that's something to be yeah, also Consider mindful it. of. Yeah. And people do love to hate it, which is fine, but yeah, the reality is you're gonna get guns that shoot well with ammo on the shelf more often than you're going to find that on the average. Yeah, yep, for seven sure. millimeter weight. But like you said, we're not getting into chamber design because that's uh, a different ball game and hard to quantify. That, sometimes, you yeah. know, with folks. Yep. But gosh, for the 708, for for having such a slow fizzle for 30 years almost, it really came on the scene and and quickly pronounced itself here to stay. You know, that's, I've got friends that shoot it. I got a lot of uh, my dad's friends that shoot it. I remember growing up and people hunting. 708 was always part of the conversation. And, uh, for good reason, as we've learned today. Yeah. My the only, little bit of experience that I have with it, besides talking to folks all over the phone and tech is, is that buddy that I was going to hand load those one sixty twos or those one fifties for with that stay ball. Uh, I remounted a scope cause it was mounted poorly in my opinion, <laughs> uh, and took it to the range and he gave me a couple boxes, of Superformance one thirty nine SST. I took three shots to get it sighted in and took a five shot group and they were all in one ragged hole. And I said, we're, we're done, done here. here. There's no need. So yeah. that, that was a Tika. The old Tika T3. Tika T3 light. Can't go wrong with the Tika. Judd, you're a yeah. Tika man. Maybe yeah, I was. We were. <laughs> yeah, Maybe that could, be the, the business there. that could be the start of it your, could be a classic. your ultimate whitetail could. gun. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to seriously consider it. The, the 708. I think I need to do that. I don't know why I've overlooked it for so long, but yeah, I think I need to. 
Yeah. I may say this after all these podcasts, so we talk yeah. about cartridges. I might talk I into collect, everything. I got to well, collect them all. You know what? <laughs> after after the 243 uh, podcast, we were driving back to the shop, and Preston was like, I got to build a 243 Winchester. I'm going to run 58 grain VMAXs at 3,900. At a yeah. minimum, get a barrel. Yeah. You like I'll throw I'd, it on an action. Uh, yeah. Switch so, barrel. Yeah. Maybe we, uh, maybe, yeah, we'll end up with one of each here before too long. Nothing wrong with that. Might yeah. have to. Might have to. Listening out there, guys, if you've got a favorite 708 recipe, you know, for a cartridge that's been around this long, where it is really well suited for using powders like Bargett, Reloader 15, you know, some of those iconic staples, 4064. If you got a, a recipe or a good combination or a rifle and ammo combination that's worked well for you guys, let us know about it. I want to hear about it. And yeah, don't tell us how many grains, but tell us what bullet you're yeah, using, what, what your powder. rifle is, what powder. That'd be yeah, cool. Because uh, I'd like to. Get that compiled, and then have Judd sort through it. See if uh, if he's building the gun, what kind of yeah kind Every, of performance. Everybody he can help expect. me spend my money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, it's definitely one to be considered. Maybe build a scout rifle. That'd be kind of cool. Utilitarian. You are a cattle farmer now. Yeah, oh, you need one rancher. out there. You might have to. <laughs> might yeah. have to get it out of coyote. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And got to keep your peripheral if you got calves running around and. Mama, mama cow coming That's in here looking for you. Yep, definitely have to consider that. <laughs> right. Well, before we spend any more of Judd's money, is there anything <laughs> else you guys want to mention about the 708 before we wrap this one up? I can't think of anything. I think it's a it's a good cartridge, you know, uh, medium-sized, short-action cartridge, high sectional density, good BC bullets. Mm-hmm. It's, a good, it's a good cartridge. Can't go wrong choosing this one. Judd, Unless anything? you don't already have a 6.5 Creedmoor. <laughs> <laughs> Collect them all. That's what yeah. I'm saying now. Yeah, Judd's a collector. When did that start? <laughs> when did we do the 308 podcast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything else to add either. I know it's a little bit shorter on the podcast front than we normally do, but this one, there's not a ton more to talk about. There's really no cons. I mean, if you want to hunt bigger game more often, there's probably a better cartridge for you. But depending on where you're at and what you're doing, this could be just an easy button. Yep, varmints yeah. to elk. Yeah, varmints to elk. It really does does it all. Factory ammo from all the manufacturers. Bullets galore available in 7 millimeter. There's probably... Oh, I guess there's one thing which say brass easy to oh, obtain, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, 708 factory brass, sure. But yeah, you could neck down a 308. If you had no to. No problem. Yep. There's probably close to two dozen propellants on the market. Now, we know powders are hard to get, but... There's probably at 18 to 24 different powders that you could use if you needed to in this cartridge. Incredibly versatile. So, yeah, if you haven't considered the 7mm 08 Remington, put it, uh, yeah, put it on the radar. This might be your favorite cartridge. Food for thought. Food for thought. Awesome. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this talk about the 7mm 08 Remington, a cartridge that is versatile, been around for a long time, Easy to load for, easy to shoot, plenty of rifles, plenty of ammo out there. Great for the new shooter, the recoil sensitive shooter, or anybody looking to get medium sized game performance at moderate traditional ranges. Just an awesome option. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.